Hello everyone, the Clues Views again. Um, so today I wanted to talk about something that has been discussed on Catholic social media a lot uh, recently, and that is a quote that Bishop Barron used um, from then Cardinal Ratzinger, now Pope Emeritus Benedict the Sixteenth, um, discussing about being faithful to the the today of the Church. And I've seen that, you know, Vigano responded to it, Taylor Marshall's responded to it. And I, for, for the sake of my audience, I wanted to give you my presentation of it because, again, we seem to have another problem with things being taken out of context. Now, the, uh, the quote, first I'm going to read the quote that Bishop Barron gave on his website, on the um, Word on Fire Vatican II FAQ page. Um, and I'm going to read it the way that it's presented there. Um, because I, that is that is part of what's going on here. Um, now, there are ellipses in it, and that's important, because you kind of have to see the full quote to understand what's actually being said. Um, so let me read that first. The, and the quote goes... To defend the true tradition of the church today means to defend the council, dot, dot, dot. We must remain faithful to the tr today of the church, not the yesterday or tomorrow. And this today of the church is the documents of Vatican II, without reservations that amputate them and without arbitrariness that distorts them, end quote. Now, that quote has been rebuked by the likes of Vigano, and Taylor Marshall, um, and they've specifically clung on to the section where it says, we must remain faithful to the today of the church, not the yesterday or tomorrow. And let me say from the beginning, if that were the full quote, I, I, I would take issue with it as well. Um, however, I would imagine that at least Vigano knows the full quote, or at least would have looked it up, considering the fact that he was very close to... Um, Ratzinger slash Pope Emeritus Benedict the Sixteenth, um, and I, I would have hoped that he would have looked up the full quote. Um, it comes from the Ratzinger report um, from Ignatius Press, uh, 1980. It uh, was just published in 1985, pages 28 to 29 and 31 is where the full section comes from. You can find this um, on Patheos website as well. Um, but I want to read important sections of this to you to see the full quote and therefore help you understand the full context and point that Ratzinger was trying to make all those years ago. <clears throat> it must be stated that Vatican II is upheld by the same authority as Vatican I and the Council of Trent, namely, the Pope and the College of Bishops in communion with him. That also with regard to its contents, Vatican II is in the strictest continuity with both previous councils and incorporates their texts word for word in decisive points. Dot, dot, dot. Whoever accepts Vatican II as it has clearly expressed and understood itself, at the same time accepts the whole binding tradition of the Catholic Church, particularly also the two previous councils. Dot, dot, dot. It is likewise impossible to decide in favor of Trent and Vatican I, but against Vatican II. Whoever denies Vatican II denies the authority that upholds the other two councils, and thereby detaches them from their foundation. And this applies to the so-called traditionalism, also in its extreme forms. Every partisan choice destroys the whole, the very history of the Church, which can exist only as an indivisible unity. To defend the true tradition of the Church today means to defend the Council. It is our fault if we have at times provided a pretext to the right and the left alike to view Vatican II as a break and an abandonment of the tradition. There is instead a continuity that allows neither a return to the past nor a flight forward, neither anachronistic longings nor unjustified impatience. 
we must remain faithful to the, to the today of the church, not the yesterday or tomorrow. And this today of the church is the documents of Vatican II, without reservations that amputate them, and without arbitrariness that distorts them. Now, it's a little bit long of a quote, but I think it is important because it helps you see the full point that um, Ratzinger was trying to make. He's not saying that we can remain faithful to the church of today as a break from the the past. He's arguing that that's impossible. Okay, so it's that you know that seemed to be what Vigano and Marshall seem to be trying to suggest is that somehow Ratzinger was saying we well, don't need to worry about being faithful to the church of the past. He wasn't saying that we need to like ignore the tradition. He was saying that Vatican II is part of the tradition and is in continuity with it. We already know that Marshall disagrees with that. But it's important to understand what Ratzinger himself was saying and what he meant. Um, because that, that is key. What he's trying to get at, I believe, and having studied his theology of revelation and his understanding of tradition, is that we don't... He, he thinks that what we might call uber-trads on one hand and liberals on the other are at bottom the same. And he mentions that in his memoirs. Because he says they both pick a time period in the church and say that's it. And he's saying both are wrong in doing that. You don't get to pick a decade or a century, whether it's 1960s, whether it's, you know, the 1500s, whether it's the 13th century. You don't get to pick. The church is one continual transtemporal subject, the, the mystical body of Christ present in this world substantially, again, in a personal form, a personal mode of existence in a way. The subsisting in River references that, the same as the, the Trinitarian persons are defined by Aquinas as um, subsistent relations. So we have to we have to understand that part of, of what he's saying. Um, so what he means is you can't just you can't claim that you well, I'm not being gonna be faithful to the church of today, I'm gonna be, be faithful to the church of yesterday, but not the church of today. That's what he's saying. You don't get to pick. It's You have to be filled with the church. And um, also, likewise, on the liberal side, it tends to be, well, I want Vatican III, where we're, you know, hopefully they're going to let us do all these things that they didn't let us do in Vatican II, but we had hoped for. He's saying, no, that that's what he refers to as the um, unjustified impatience, which is wrong, as is anachronistic longings, like oh, well, we want to live back in that century. Because you don't have a choice. You live in the church of today. The church of today has the same authority it did in the past. You're bound by it. Tradition is not just handing down through the ages. It's also from top down. It's from above to below. You are bound by the magisterium of today. And whether you like it or not, the magisterium has authority. I'm not saying that everything that the church has done um, in the last few decades has been good? Obviously not, especially when it comes to a lot of government issue, governance issues. But we do believe that the magisterium has the charism of truth. And that's what we are bound by. Um, we can't slip into a Protestant mentality as Catholics and think that we are the judge of the magisterium or magisterial texts. Um, I've already done other videos about, about that. Um, but that, I wanted to bring this to your attention because I think it's really important. When you read the full quote, it's not nearly as um, troublesome as it, that select quote made it seem. Um, so I hope that helps you understand that. And I also want to show that this is reflected in another of Ratzinger's works, um, a book he wrote called Principles of Catholic Theology, Building Stones for Fundamental Theology. The very beginning of the book deals with this issue. It's topic number one. He was asked to give a talk on what constitutes Christian faith today. And, spoiler alert, he ends up basically saying that's the wrong question. It's been phrased inappropriately. And he basically sides with what Vigano was saying in general about, you know, the in the history of the church, it's the whole tradition. Um, so, the the question is, what constitutes Christian faith today? And he says, quote, from page 15, literally the very beginning of chapter 1 of this book. 
The question of what constitutes Christian faith today was not first raised by the author. It was assigned to him as a question that is always and everywhere being asked. And there's a footnote saying that he was asked to give this talk in 1973. There's a lecture he was asked to give. Okay. Upon closer reflection, one may nevertheless conclude that it has not been precisely formulated. For only that can be constitutive that is not just of today. The more precise and accurate formulation would be, with the passing of yesterday, what continues to be, or what continues to constitute Christian faith even today, or still today. It's probably Nach in German is my guess, N-O-C-H, and that can mean even or still. Um, so it's clear that Ratzinger is not a person who says, well, all that matters is of today. No, he understands that if it's constitutive of the faith, then it can't just be of today. Um, but also it can't just be of tomorrow, and it can't just be of the past. Like there's a, There is this um, continual um, continuity. And so I think that's really important. Again, he's trying to, to hold that, that virtue and not go to either extreme, because any virtue can be missed by either extreme, by excess or by privation. He's trying to say we have to avoid, to the right and to the left alike, we have to avoid the errors that can lead to that in those extremes, and affirm that Vatican II is in continuity with the past councils, including Trent and Vatican I, um, and that we have to stop picking time periods. You don't get to decide as a Catholic what decades or century you live in. You're bound by the church, and the church has authority, and that's the bottom line, and she's teaching. So you need to be docile and learn from the church. Um, so, and obviously there's different levels of authoritative teaching, and there's some things that some popes and bishops say or do that's not magisterial teaching. So we're not saying that it's impeccable. But a Vatican, uh, an ecumenical council is uh, among the most authoritative. So you can't just throw it out, okay? That's the bottom line. So basically what Ratzinger was arguing in the full quote that a lot of people missed was the fact that there's that continuity. Again, it's, it's not surprising he would say this. Everyone knows he affirms the hermeneutic of continuity and um, despises the hermeneutic of rupture. And that's all he's talking about here. He's not saying we ignore the entire past. He's saying that to be faithful to the Vatican II is to be faithful to the past. It's, you know, um, so that's that's basically it as far as doctrine goes. Um, and so he's saying that we, we are bound by the council and, and we need to implement it correctly. You know, and that's it. Um, so I hope that helps clarify some things and... Um, you know, please like and subscribe. Help me support me if you can. But uh, otherwise, just God bless.